death on Sun Mountain, or is it Sun Mountain Herd? I don't know. It's referred to as both titles, so I'm really not sure which one, which one it actually is. But anyway, it's the second episode in the series, so it's expected to have some little rough edges still. So I was surprised when going back to it for my rewatch for the guide how much I actually did enjoy it. The episode opens with the four Cartwrights finding a group of Paiute Indians stealing some cows on the Ponderosa. As an aside, I have to harp on how beautiful the scenery is as they ride through it, really giving those color TV sellers their money's worth there. Tukwa's shoot Ben Cartwright line, just as the credits play, is a little awkward and as and the theme sort of dumbed down of dumbing down the dialogue for the Indians and how Ben speaks to them continues in the first half of the episode. On the subject of the opening credits, though, it was nice to see the change in how they took that cringy picture of Haas from a Rose for Lada out of it that they used for the first episode. After the chief explains to the Cartwrights their situation of having no food because the white settlers took it all, Adam speaks up and tells them that they would be doing them a favor by taking those beeves because they're the weakest in the herd. I thought that was a kindness and its way of allowing the Indian Indians to keep their pride intact. Good lord, I love Adam. Ben mentions Sutter's California and how all of the same things happened there when men looking to strike it rich became, became greedy and destroyed their land. Sutter will be mentioned again in Henry Comstock a few episodes later in one of the examples of the show's adding real history into its lore. John Sutter was a German-born pioneer who discovered gold on, the land, on his land in 1848, kicking off the California gold rush. The show seems to place the Cartwrights into the historical events by saying that they knew Sutter as a neighbor and a friend. The Cartwrights ride into Virginia City, which is nothing like the bustling town on a mountain that we come to know in later episodes. There are several tents built to house those struggling to make it in this new western land. One such family, the Harrises, who consist of a man, his wife, and two sons, meet the Cartwrights who agreed to sell them cattle at $20 a head. The man, who was initially gruff toward the stranger, softens and is, in, and is overjoyed by the news. He's so happy, in fact, that he makes a Yankee joke where Adam speaks up and says he doesn't know much about Yankees. Another cute little moment with him in the episode. Meanwhile, Haas and Joe appear to be seeing the Bucket of Blood saloon for the first time, and Joe is immediately hit on by a saloon girl named Glory. She seems to be the only saloon girl in town at this point, which, again, isn't the case in the coming episodes. They almost act like saloon girls as a concept is foreign to their part of the world, which honestly gave me whiplash for a second. I guess Virginia City really was just a baby in this episode. Speaking of babies, Joe can't be more than, what, 17 here? Boy, I really shouldn't be getting flirted with by an older woman. We next meet our main antagonist for the episodes, businessman Mark Burdett and his uh, partner, Muscle Thorn. The man who plays Thorne, Leo Gordon, will go on to do many episodes in the show and has no shortage of creepy of a creepy factor in every one. The guy's typecast as a villain and it's really easy to see why. I remember being a kid watching the show for the first time and him giving me the creeps when he'd show up on screen. Anybody else feel like that? Burdett and Thorne are, concern, are cornering the market on antelope meat by taking it away from the Paiutes. Joe, being young and talkative, decides to tell them all about the cattle, despite Ben's efforts to shed him up. This prompts Burdett to try and push Ben into selling to him. He invites them into his back cave, I mean, office, to talk business. Seriously, that thing really does look like a hunk of rock that could be used as a back cave. Just saying. Ben refuses to do business with them, and Adam speaks up against him and what they're doing, leading Thorne to hit Adam. That's quite the business strategy. Beat up on one of the men you want to do business with. I guess that lends itself to the stereotype of the dumb muscle versus the brains of the outfit. Burdette goes into the saloon and buys Glory a drink. It escalates rather quickly into him wanting to own her, and he goes into the whole cliche, what's a girl like you doing in a place like this, and I'm going to take you out of here. I feel like they had way too little chemistry for this to make sense. But I guess her being the only saloon girl in town, he had no choice but to flex his big boy muscles. Tuco rides onto the Ponderosa in the next scene, as Mr. Harris is buying the cattle from the cart rides. I feel like it was refreshing to see him not being a jerk toward the Indians when you see so much hostility between white men and the Paiutes in so many of the episodes. 
Thorne gets the cringeworthy idea to dress himself and another man up as Indians and shoot some white settlers, including Harris, in order to stoke said hostilities, so I guess that's out the window. Thorne kills Tuqua in order to really seal the deal. Tuqua being the chief's brother ensured a war. One must wonder if Muscle Brain thought they might end up being casualty in said war, but hey, what do I know? Ben speaks with the chief to try to avoid war, who calls his braves his young men, which felt strange to me. Adam accuses Burdett of being the one behind it all, and Joe jumps into Burdett's defense. Just like in an episode later on. <clears throat> Joe decides to prove Adam wrong by going into town and talking to Burdett. Thorne meets him there and kicks the snot out of him. The camera angles during the fight scene are pretty good, if I do say so. Burdett comes to Joe's rescue and fires Thorne in a clever little ro ruse that Joe totally falls for. We have to give him a break here, though. The trick is played against a young kid, so that doesn't make them smart. When Burdett blames Tuqua for the incited war, Joe speaks up for the Paiutes, and that shows a clever streak in him that grows as he does. Joe may be young, but he's not stupid. He wants to see the good in people, but once shown proof otherwise, he admits that he was wrong. I had to laugh when, even after getting beat up, he still has the energy to flirt with Glory. That's such a Joe thing to do. When Joe goes home and reluctantly shows his family the product of his run-in with Thorn, the way they all gather around him is another beautiful little scene that made me love the episode even when I thought there wasn't a whole lot more to it. Haas has also started to show his special feeling for his baby brother in this episode in a relationship that grows throughout the show and becomes a staple of it. The other character that shows a depth and room for development in here is Glory. She resists being owned by a man who only bought her about three drinks, maybe four. I actually felt a bit of pride for her when she starts to catch on to what Burdett and Thorne are up to. She goes to see the Harrises and finds out that Tuqua was never even there during the attack. That's another credit to the show for making a saloon girl capable of more than just serving drinks in a flashy dress. Thorne and Burdett abduct Glory in view of the Harris sons, and they call their mom outside to see it, too. It stuck out to me, though, when the boys are telling her, and she responds with, What girl? Lady, she just left. What girl do you think? When the Cartwrights arrive, Mrs. Harris tells them what happened, and Joe apologizes to Adam. He did that last episode, too. See? No matter how many times they argue, Joe does love his oldest brother, and Adam is quick to forgive his baby brother. They catch up with Burdette and Thorne, who pours out Glory's only source of water and wants to leave her out in the hottest strip of land in the territory, as they mention. Burdette finally grows a spine and goes after Thorne. Thorne fatally shoots him, just as Hoss tries to sneak up from behind to keep Glory from getting shot, too. The way he's offended when he realizes that someone would hurt a woman is just typical, beautiful Hoss. Our poor Ponderosa teddy bear gets hit pretty hard by Thorne. Burdett uses his last breath to redeem himself by killing Thorne. Glory leans over his dead body and tells Adam that he found his bonanza in the end. If you like shows that mention their title and dialogue during the episode, this one is definitely for you, because they say bonanza several times. Honestly, I think one or two would have been enough, but that's just a minor gripe on my part. Overall, I was pleasantly surprised in watching this episode for the podcast how much I actually enjoyed it. I came into this expecting to say that this was one of the very few that I didn't like all that much. While it doesn't land on my rewatch list very often, I do enjoy the family scenes and the guest stars do pretty well. I thought it was well casted all around and the plot in its place in history made sense. While I think other episodes do the Indian-centered plots better, this one isn't too bad. Give it a watch and tell me what you think.